I just had a Biden moment when I had forgotten what I what I said, what I was thinking. And it made me it reminded me of Mr. Joe Biden, who, you know, he said uh, <laughs> he's he told people they weren't black if they didn't vote for him. Yep. Um, and then he also in 2019 blamed um, effectively black voters for the cocaine epidemic. Mm. Um, and let's let's hear a little bit of what he had to say, because look who called him out, fam. Oh, God. It wasn't on drugs nah, was one that Pat Moynihan, and he's a great guy. Remember, the, the crack epidemic came from the Bahamas. And we were told by medical doctors at the time that because it permeated the membrane of the brain more quickly, it was the crack you never come back. It was somehow fundamentally different than someone in a beautiful neighborhood like this sniffing a line of cocaine would get not automatic sentence for. On drugs was one that Pat Moynihan... And he's a okay. And then so what's his name? Pat Moynihan. Pat Moynihan. He says it's way more dangerous, fam. So we gotta listen to this some son of a bitch, and we gotta punish people of color more, harder exactly. than white people. Mister Mister Crime Bill, right? Um, yeah. And then he was also this the second part. He goes on to talk about this, and it, I'm in in retrospect, I'm gonna talk about um, what exactly it's. He blamed it on black people, but the CIA, of course, our, our CIA that overthrows governments and yeah. causes regime change in multiple countries was actually responsible for the uh, cocaine and crack epidemic. To the core. And to, exactly. Directly to, to the core. To the core. Yeah. And, um, and let me just say this much, too, as well. And as I'm having a, 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 a Joe Biden moment, what he's trying to say, he's trying to justify the crime bill. He's trying yeah. to justify the Rockefeller laws, which punished uh, crack offenders harder than cocaine offenders, yep. which we know back in the days, the cocaine users were in the discos. They pro they look like me, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like that <laughs> Danny Terrio dancing on the dance floor and stuff. While in the ghetto or the smaller or the or the you know the the uh, more damaged part of times, the poorer areas were using crack because it was more mm -hmm. it was a residue of cocaine. And he was trying to justify the punishment of crack over cocaine, and it's just a crock of shit. It really is. Yeah, and um. Basically, the background on this, just to put it simply, is uh, there's a really good article you guys should check out and Johnny can pull it up. And it's called the CIA Contras Gangs and Crack. Mm -hmm. They go through how everything that the CIA has pushed every uh, person and they talk about crack and, and what specifically, of course, it, this happened in, in Los Angeles. That was the capital of of crack cocaine. But he goes on to say. In August of 1996, the San Jose Mercury News initiated an extended series of articles linking the CIA's Contra Army to the crack cocaine epidemic in Los Angeles. Based on a year-long investigation, reporter Gary Webb wrote that during the 1980s, the CIA helped fi finance its covert war against the Nicaragua's leftist government through sales of cut-rate cocaine to South Central L.A. drug dealer Ricky Ross. This series unleashed a storm of protests spearheaded by black radio stations in the Congressional Black Caucus with demands for official inquiries. OK, Pasta, what can you tell me about uh, uh, Rick Ross and how that whole thing went down? Well, what was going on? And we've talked about this before. And first of all, I just want to say, like, the, when it comes to the crime bill and it comes to the Rockefeller laws, as far as treating crack cocaine on a different level than cocaine, it's like. Giving somebody a harsher penalty for smoking a spliff, which is mm -hmm. tobacco with a little marijuana, mm -hmm. than giving somebody uh, who got arrested for like uh, shatter, which is like pure, intense THC. In other words, they're trying to justify and say that this is harder on you when it's a lot less of, you know, of the actual drug and the substance itself. Mm -hmm. than like cocaine was. And remember, it's the residue of cocaine. OK, but but when Biden stands behind this it's what he's standing behind is what what we're reading about right now which is freeway rick ross who was given money by the cia and cocaine and crack by the cia mm -hmm. to go sell on the streets and then in turn take that money buy weapons and to then arm the contras who were trying to maintain control over the sandinistas exactly. and nicaragua and the contras yeah. are the neoliberal warmongering yes uh the puppet government that we pushed in yes and, yes. and it's important to say fam when Joe Biden says this right here, he's been exposed. Yeah. He is standing behind imperialism. 
That's what he's doing. He's justifying the actual mechanisms that we use, ignoring where the root of the problem came by because he's for it. He's mm. for regime change. Joe Biden is a regime change aficionado, and this exposes him right here. This little thing, when he's trying to justify about crack cocaine over, over cocaine and, and the ways we, it went about and how it was created, it wasn't created in the fucking Bahamas. Mm. No, it was created by the CIA to get out in the streets, freeway yeah. Rick Ross over the regular Rick Ross who sued Rick yeah. Ross. That's why Rick Ross yeah. became the popularity because he took the name of freeway Rick Ross because freeway Rick Ross was a gangster fam. Yeah, and, and, and it just shows you how Joe Biden would be as a president. Like He would just continue the disastrous uh, criminal prosecutions. He wouldn't reform our criminal justice system. And, of course, it also tells you this, he's on the side of the CIA yeah. and the military industrial complex. He's because that's how deep it goes. It's more than him just being uh, racist or racially blind because he, he is. He's blaming a minority. <laughs> it's always easier to blame the minorities for everything. He's literally doing what the Democrats criticize the Republicans of doing. That's yeah. what Joe Biden was doing a year ago yeah. uh, when we could have stopped him. And I'm just going to just finish off by saying, uh, reading this part of his article, which is really important. Much of the CIA contra drug story had been revealed years ago in the press and in congressional hearings. The Mercury News series added a critical missing link. It followed the cocaine trail to Ross and black L.A. gangs who became street level distributors of crack, a cheap and powerful form of cocaine. The CIA's drug network wrote Webb, opened the first pipeline between Colombia's cocaine cartels and the black neighborhoods of Los Angeles, yep. a city now known as the crack capital of the world. Black gangs use their profits to buy automatic weapons, like Pasta said, sometimes one from the CIA-linked drug dealer. So yep. this does a whole link all the way up to the, the Colombian uh, drug war. So this is our war on drugs. We funded the war on drugs yep. to do to fund our CIA operations. Yep. That's basically it. There's no if, maybe, no. This is These are facts. Yeah. That and, is the truth. And these things go deep-rooted. This is the reason why the NED and all these other NGOs were created, because they got caught with their hands in the cookie jar. There was the whole Iran-Contra scandal where Reagan had to fire half of mm -hmm. his cabinet because of this shit, because Webb exposed this shit, and it got so big that Reagan had to do something. But then out of this uh, mm -hmm. was born the NED. National Endowment for Democracy, where instead of selling uh, crack cocaine on the streets to buy weapons and the weapons go in the hands of the L.A. gang members and the co and the Contras, now they just use our tax money yep. and take a piece of it and give it to the NED and kind of hide behind their empire mechanisms, their imperialist mechanisms. That's how deep this situation goes. And what Biden said last year, it's just a big time exposure. And not to mention, fam, that those people are now, uh, you know, they have kids. These people go to jail. It yeah. sets the whole remainder of that family up for failure. And then, um, and then you have what, the private prison system, right? Yeah, absolutely. Another that's thing. another f money funneling machine. And Webb, who exposed the story on Mercury News, was pushed out. Uh, for, by the mainstream media, the New York Times, if you read the article further on, which I recommend again, the New York Times and the mainstream media completely denied Mercury News's report, Webb's report. And he was pretty much discredited. Yeah, he was thrown out, out of that whole, everybody yeah. else. Because yeah. that once again, that's at that time, the uh, elites were starting to grab up all the media avenues and they kind of shunned him. Uh, yeah. It said that he killed himself, but we don't know. A lot of people think he was murdered as well, fam. So before we get on to the next topic, can I say mm -hmm. hi to some people on Rockman? Sure. Real quick, so to summarize, Sorry. You're summarize. You're saying, you're saying that the CIA funded drug dealers in the U.S. Mm -hmm. got got the drugs from Colombia, mm -hmm. and basically um, created a culture that culture in the yep. in the black community. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and then also created private prisons yep at that time create yeah. private prisons. so you what you're getting to is that in a way that is a form of of keeping people imprisoned and slaved i mean i'm not even it is it's I a form that. of control that is i mean that is what they did and they didn't do it only to the black community they did it to the uh, latino community yeah. that's i yes. mean you can look at the throughout LA. Vistas. And look at the gangs and a lot of kids, you know, I, we have our friend Jen Abra who works with uh, the, the prisoners and a lot of these people immigrated from other countries. And so now that they have a criminal record, if they get released, they're going to be deported to their countries and then they will meet their fate there yeah. because they were part of that like MS-13 or whatever gang and they have to pay because that is how that's how it is. And that is what we 
have done with our foreign policy and our criminal justice system yeah. flat out. This is a, a, a perfect picture, Johnny, of imperialism right yeah, here. Side by this side. is imperialism right here. And this is the whole system. This is about this is a tie. Uh, yeah. How you tie the foreign policy imperialism mm -hmm. to our very people here yeah. in the city. And the domestic policy, too, that was going with it. Right. To say once again, can you imagine getting more punishment for a spliff? You have a joint that has marijuana and and tobacco in it. Mm. Tobacco is legal. Nicotine. Little marijuana. You know what I'm saying? But the, the little amounts of marijuana, you're going to get punished harder if you were found with a, a sheet of uh, that, that shatter stuff, which is pure, yeah. intense TH. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But once again, who uses those things and who uses the other? Right. It was big in the black community. And it's the most, it, once again, and then going and giving weapons for uh, talking about elites in yeah. Nicaragua to hold power over it once again. A socialist kind of mentality, a yeah. company, well, Daniel Ortega and, and may those I people. add that the CIA uh, dealers who sold the weapons to the, the, the black gang members got, tw one of them got 24 months in jail and then was contracted by the de uh, DEA, by the DEA to be in a top level position while the people, the, the gang members and the drug dealers, of course, are probably still in jail that is that is the difference here that is not just a racial difference that is a power difference it's a a, a class difference as yeah. well remember we wanted nicaragua too just the way we wanted honduras the way we wanted guatemala Panama. we want all their natural resources fucking bananas bananas i mean i know it's a joke but how many bananas are sold in the u.s and it's owned by one corporation because we said we don't want the government that government used that particular resource to give uh social programs to their people education food water mm -hmm. shelter and it was taken away from them so the ufc the united fruit fucking company can fucking own that and, and, and now it's dole yeah and chiquita so it, it funnels down to one people one person a, a group of people rather than a whole society and a whole culture that could live off those resources you know what i'm saying they just they pretty much took the freaking bananas and took it for themselves socialized it you know yep. the resources to create capitalism yep. and then to put down any socialism in the world especially yeah. in us uh, latin america they don't want Especially these brown in, people exactly. no they don't want to we can't see the, the they're they're getting education they're having a great society you know what i'm saying and it, it's just it a right shame now.